Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's video. I am joined by Pete once again. Pete, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited to get into this. I'm so excited. We have already reacted to opening two. If you want our initial off-the-press reactions, that video will be linked down below. But in today's video, we are going to be breaking down scene by scene of this opening, giving our thoughts, giving some theories, oh, yeah. what they might represent. And let me just tell you, there was a lot that happened in this opening. Uh, why the hell is Utopia baseball here? We're going to discuss and uh, <laughs> give our theories. So without further ado, let's begin. So we have the Gagato shot, yes. the Roman shot, cool shots there. I love the back-to-back -back here shot. Yeah, bro shot. And um, we have the transitional scene is fire through Yuga's eyes. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's um, green. Green eyes. Yeah. We keep zooming in. And then really cool transition here, actually. Love it. We have the fire explosion lead into the scenes with Let's Seven's Road Magician and Luke's Trigiers. Yes. Uh, obviously, the two people that clashed and collided yeah, and at the see, end of the season. And you see about the clash right here. Yes. And so we get the logo for Seven's, them clashing again, maybe representing that, that uh, rivalry is not I, over. I, I swear um, to God, this better not be a shot that Gaku Ting is coming back. I did not notice this the first it, time it we watched better this not opening. Be. Um, I'm just I, saying right now. I hope Gaku Ting is not a thing that comes back. Please, no. Um, I'm surprised it actually made the opening. I know. For how little it I know. was and in I'm season one. Disappointed. Um, so Gaku. <laughs> great transitions here in this opening. Yeah, great transition to Rook happily skipping along yeah. like a little um, innocent. Like kid. Like, like a kid. Yeah, like Which a kid. Which he is. Yeah. So that's but, but, these that, but doesn't kids. usually fit his kind of persona, so it's kind of nice to see. Absolutely. See what made him so happy. Yeah, so he's just ha ha going along. And I like the color scheme, too. We have purple, yes. blue, and now Yuga's orange. Um, and Yuga is looking out. And I think that very well could just be symbolism for him always looking for what's going on, yeah. right? He has, I've used this word a lot to describe Yuga, incredible foresight. And I think his ability to read characters and read situations is what makes him really special. I like, too, that he's, he's short, so he has to lift up over the wall. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> actually very true. So him, like, looking around, I think that's probably the symbolism there. Um... We have a shot with Roa and his know, bandmates and the band here. getting some love. Yeah, it's love cool. It. I did not think Geta and uh, Ushido would be in this um, in this shot yes. or in this opening. So we got some Roa action there. We got Nail's team there. Love how Nail's reading a book. One of my favorite things about this is Nail's team. They're they're it's fascinating. They're yeah. They're two of actually my least favorite characters yeah, me too. in Sevens. Me too. So it's kind of funny to me how like I really really love Nail. Yeah. And the two characters that are supporting him are Schrodinger who, to me, is a complete waste, uh, and Araya Rana. Yeah. I mean, hey, if they're loyal to him, they're loyal to him, but yeah, I'm I'm not the biggest fan. We've barely gotten anything with those two characters as well. Like, at least with no. Geta and Ushido, we've had some There's backstory. Some development, some, whether yeah. you like it or not. Yeah, uh, the execution with that wasn't the best, but, like, with these yeah. two, they've barely been in yeah, the Yeah, well, show. you had one duel with Schrodinger, and then you have Araya Rata, I mean, was, was cheating. Yeah. So it's like, you know... I don't love that. Yeah, no. So, interesting. But cool shots there. Getting the Roa oh, yeah. team, getting the uh, Nail team. And then this we is have a fascinating them. Yeah, shot. so I want, I want to break this down. So we got... I think actually what they're doing here is we got all the dudes. Yeah. That's what I think they're doing. And, and if we go left to right here, you got Araya Rata cleaning up over there. We have Galliant. Is, is, is that Galliant That's definitely Galliant in the back. You got, you know, and actually, next to Arata is Schrodinger. Yes. You can, you can barely see and him. And you got Nail and Sebastian there. Yes. Yuga's up on Kaizo. Uh, can we see who Rook is dueling there, or is he just practicing his draw? Is I that think the method he's thing he's just doing? practicing, and then you have, you have some, okay, you have Geta playing the drums. Yes. You have Menzaburo and Nikiagi, of course. Nikiagi yes. makes the opening. Love move. it. Walk, carrying the piano. Walking across, carrying, I think or, it's the ramen it's, truck. It's the ramen truck. I that. think it's the ramen cart. You have Gakuto and Ranze meditating, or Rinosuke, I'm sorry, yes, meditating. Rinosuke. And you got Shwar coming in there on the yeah, left. Yeah, and the Pigeon coming yes. in from the middle. The dove, I like the Dove Rod popping up there. That's yeah, so funny. you have all of Nail's team, you have all of Roa's team, you have yeah. almost all of the Ramen Club. Um, I think these are the, you know, no Yoshio here, no yeah. Mad Max. I think these are the characters that are going to keep some relevancy that going That we're going to have focus on, yeah. Absolutely. Um... And then I think we get now I think, to the now, girls. Now I think we're getting to the so girls. Got Mimi. Um, and Sevens is the first show, by the way, where they actually have enough girl characters to do to something like this. show them in the opening. No Yu-Gi-Oh! can do something like this <laughs> because they, they never had enough girl characters. Yeah, very true. So you have Mimi, 
And then you have, yeah, Ronze come in with her flip. She, she's always, and then, and then you have a little bit of the love yeah, kind of, of course, element the love the element. And then you have Roman Interesting flying Interesting to have in. her come in from, like, upside down and then flip over. Yeah, like, I, I... I was like, I guess it's just for aesthetic purposes. Yeah, that's kind of like a spy maneuver there, yeah. right, off of Ronze's uh, Oh, move. dude, if there is a spy episode in this, I would be so happy. Yeah. They do some spoof on a spy movie, I'll be so excited. They very, they very well could. Um, yeah, and kind of a James Bond She entrance. winks here, winked in the first opening, yeah. so keeping yeah. that theme. Then you have Tiger Asana, I love that. two, pa love two love powerhouses. That. Uh, is, and it then, is it purposely like, what, what is the theme here? Because we do it here, we do it in the shop before, right? of the checkerboard. Yeah. Is it just, just for the for the look? Yeah. I uh, guess so. The squares, the yeah. checkered pieces, yeah. kind of interesting nice look. there. Um, this one is fascinating to me. Is that implying that there's four separate aliens? Yeah, this one might kill a big theory that I've had for a very long time yeah. when it comes to these girls. Uh, my theory, if you're not familiar with it, is that these girls are one character that keep getting their I think their it was a great theory. Wiped. Um, I think it's a theory that uh, a lot of people have kind of agreed oh, with. Yeah. Um, it's not a unique theory by any, any stretch of the imagination, but I wonder if this is legitimate or if this is a red herring, or, or you're just throws. seeing like the four versions of that character, right, right? Right. So we have four versions here. It might imply that we're not going to get any new versions, um, at least for the moment. At least for the moment, they're all doing different dances. Yes. And now okay, we now have we get the the the, the female yes. shot. Um, I love Tiger and Roman playing their instruments together. I love that. I love Asana here showing love to her, you know, like her machinery, because <laughs> she obviously loves that. You get a sushi ko here on the yes. right. Yes. You have Ronze. Is that book? Shit, like love books? It's all, of her, it's all of her love diaries. Yeah, all the lover yeah. diaries. All of her love diaries. You have Mimi going up with the fan. Yes. Um, you know, fan girling. And and that these are all the, the, all the aliens. That's, yeah, that's Sweet Skakaka right there. You have right? Sweet Skakaka. You have the drill one. You have Blub. Yeah. And then you have uh, Sirocco. So yeah. that shot would also imply four different aliens. It does. Which is fascinating. It does. Um, but I just, I don't know. There's part of me that still doesn't want to believe it. I know, but. If we take this opening for its word, almost, its visuals, it seems like they're four different characters. Yeah. But just why would, if that's the case, why wouldn't they know each other? They you know? know. It's know. cool, though, that you have a shot with all the guys, and then you have Love it. a shot with all the girls Love here. It. I think that's really, really awesome. And I think every character in, the, in these shots are still going to be relevant. So I think going forward, mm -hmm. you can make the case that Arata and Sebastian might have more relevancy than, like, a Yoshio. Who we've could. been kind of familiar yeah, with. Yeah, I mean, he's barely been kind of in it. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's in the background here and there, but he's done like nothing. no hunt either, which I'm happy about. Yes, yeah, I think we're we're getting Don't away like from those characters a, a little to bit to make room for and, these aliens. And this is what we're focused. Yeah, or on. the Goha siblings. I mean, hey, man, we're adding six, seven characters. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. So then you have a shot with Guru Guru. Yes. I don't make too much from this. No. Just kind of a weird shot. No. I don't know what to make of his character. This is kind of fascinating. Yes. New, new monster. It's def to me, it's not a character. To me, this very well could be the first monster with a new summoning mechanic. That's what I'm. Why else would you silhouette it? Yeah. I um, agree. Do you think it's kind of a weird silhouette there? And, and looks like a wolf. I know we haven't talked a lot about the um, the lyrics here as the, as the episode goes by. And shout out to again into my subs for doing this. Uh, but it said to the road's end that nobody sees. Right, so is that like implying here in this shot, let's assume that this monster belongs to one of these new characters. Is like, is this our road, Yuga's road coming to an end? Mm -hmm. And this is where the danger is that they didn't see coming? Is Le that what we're... L lyrics for these can yeah. sometimes very imply what's going on. You know, it could be nothing, but yeah. just throw that out there. Yeah, kind of fascinating there. Now this is the shot That's that... That's the shot I wanted. The shot that this guy That's wanted. That's the shot I wanted. So we have, of course, all the faces of these Goha siblings, yes. as well as the... And let's see where they're positioned. You kind of have the main trio. Yes. You have your girl, Yuka, mm -hmm. yellow-haired, red-haired, and then um, Saito-sama's character with the blue hair on the left. And then you have a character on the right with all their faces as well. And then you, yeah, have... you have... the. I mean, that looks like Yuka, right? I mean, like, I'm not saying it is, but, like, it no, does look on. like Yuka, it's right? A, it's, it, to me... That is one hundred and fifty thousand percent you. And you're just—I don't not, have a doubt. Like and then you're you have not the, showing it. You to. also have the silhouette of that character's eyes on the left. There, you can see it coming I mean, in. That, that looks like his hair spikes. So hundred. I mean, what do you guys think? That to me is a hundred percent. It's Yuga. gotta be right. Hundred percent. Now, Yuga. It, it, are we looking at multiple? Are we looking at a couple girls here, or just the one? Just there the one. The okay. Just the one. And then. But she has actually, she doesn't have a face covering on there on the shot, right? I believe she does. Does she? Like, she does. on the left side. Like, when you see a little bit of her. So okay, it's cut I guess, off I guess the it's image. a tiny piece there. It's cut off I like the, the face image. covering idea. Yeah. 
I like it too. I wonder why. I wonder why they have face coverings. Maybe their resemblance too much to Yuga in the opening, so they don't want to kind of give that away. Maybe. If they are related. But either way, it's just a cool it's a cool aesthetic piece. I you know that. what else they do here? That silhouette yeah. is also featured. Yeah, you as see like that? a shadow that comes up yeah. like an aura. That silhouette is featured. Uh, I mean it's that, that that's Yuga, right? And that's gonna I be mean, filled in when it gets come revealed. On, that that is has Yuga. to be Yuga chat. That has that, to be Yuga. That, Yuga is a Goha sibling. Or it's literally like and I don't think they're gonna Yuga's go twin. Right. It's Yuga's twin. But yeah. I think that's Yuga. I think it's I, I mentioned this a Holy few weeks shit. ago. I think this is gonna be similar to some animes including like a dragon ball where it's gonna be like he came down here for some reason was sent and remembers none of his past and he's gonna find out a lot about where he comes from i mean we don't we don't know anything about his past i know and, I've, I've and i think that, that point is before. purposely i agree done. i agree and he's gonna find out so whether that's yuga or not very interesting scene love that secret silhouette too in love the background it. that's clearly absolutely love it and then we get yuga yes right i don't, I don't know if that's a coincidence i don't either. yeah I, I mean come on right you get hit you know seven's road yeah and now that's an interesting but, but look at this. Ooh, that's a cool monster we're all taking a lot of that's these shots cool here monster. look like they're kind of on the moon in the moon in space but remember it, I'm pretty sure in opening one they it, did that as well. It could just be the sphere that yeah, comes over during the Yeah, pretty sure in opening one they did that as well. It could be. That is a cool monster. Very cool. And I imagine it's the ace. And now we know this monster's name. Um, let me pull it up, and I'll put the card on screen as well. Yeah. I deleted it, but it's it's G Gia Katena, something like that. Yes. G and then M. You, you put it up in post. It'll be up. <laughs> it'll be up here. But this is a monster that we have seen before. And, I mean, I mean, this on. is where, I come mean, on. explain this to me and people that are like me that don't know the significance of this. If you have never watched Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel like this man here, yes. uh, that is very clearly Utopia. Uh, or a monster that is almost identically based off of Utopia. And why is that significant? Well, number one, Utopia is an Xyz monster. Uh, and at the moment, we do not have Xyzes or any methods outside of Maximum in the game of Rush Dueling or in Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. Uh, number two, there was an episode where Utopia played baseball, I'm pretty sure. Right. Where they did like that, a baseball that's, style That's a common duel. thing in Japanese anime. Absolutely. They love you saw the GX episode where they were playing baseball. Yeah, and all, also JJK is also has Jujutsu baseball. Jujutsu Kaisen, yes. Baseball, um, baseball lights. And then the reason that it's so important is Yuma Tsukumo, the protagonist of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, that was his ace. Yeah. This should hold the same weight as seeing a Dark Magician as seeing a Stardust Dragon, as seeing a Firewall Dragon or a Decode Talker. Th this is not the monsters that we've previously seen or Millennium Shield, which is coming up next. Mm -hmm. This is an ace of a former protagonist, a number monster. That's crazy. This is insanity uh, on top of the fact that it could be hinting at Xyz. The things orbiting around it are, is it overlay units? Is it baseballs? In this shot, it is baseballs, right? Because yeah. it's fitting with the theme of baseball. Now, the question here is, are we getting baited? That it's just it's just for the scene for the theme of baseball? <laughs> or does it also say more that these are overlay units? And, like, there's no way we're getting XCs in this show, right? Like, I don't think How so. would that work? How would it work with the game? There's no way they're doing that. It's got to be just like a... Like a nod. Well, we right? know next week we're getting ri uh, riding rush tools. So, a is, so are all of these right. characters going to bring a flavor and a taste of a previous show into this it's series? Just, how is that going to work? Like, I guess you would just have to change the rules a little bit, right? Because everything that we've seen legacy card wise was normal summons that were coming in, right? right. Normal monsters. I guess we would just change the rules of like, yeah, here's an XZ's or potentially a synchro monster, right, with the riding rush tools coming up. But we do it a little different in the Rush Duel game, but we still get to use the card. Yeah. Like, that's the only way it could work, right? Yeah. Like, there's no way those methods... Because Sevens has done something at its studio bridge. They're like, hey, we're simplifying the game. We're not going to overcomplicate this. I feel like they're going to stick with that theme, right? I don't disagree. I don't disagree with you. But at the but same time... it's so time, cool to see. I mean, so, like, for me... Insane. For me and for people out there, right... Like, Vrains is the only one that I finished in terms of right. shows. This is like a Dakota Talker. Yes. Just showed this up This is right like here. a Dakota Talker. Okay. So. Or Firewall Dragon. Okay. That's the weight that this has. Okay, wow. Um, and this is an ace that one of the Goa siblings will be using. Yeah. Is, Just it, like, is it the main one? Or I don't no? know. <laughs> and another ace. So this is an interesting shot here. Yes. Because this is a monster that we have also seen. I showed Pete the video. Um... It's called Levia Dragon Dadalus. Yes. I probably said that the old, wrong. The old a GX random days. fisherman <laughs> against Judai used this in GX. Yeah. It's on the sea, 
And it is going up against one of Rook's dragons. Yeah. This is a duel we are going to see between the Fisher guy. We know that's coming up. And Rook's dragon, or the Fisher Goa sibling and Rook's dragons. But we have another throwback monster Love here. Love the scenery in the background, too, of like yes. the, like a tornado is coming down over the ocean. Very chaotic waters going on. Yeah. I like that maybe um, kind of hinting to incoming danger here that is now cast upon our, uh, our main cast. Yeah, and Rook is the one that's going to be out at sea versing this yeah. guy. In 55, probably, based on 55's title. Maybe this is Rook's first I hole. love it, too, because, like, it fits into the theme of, like, the Hydra, right? Of, like, taking over on the ocean what sailors were afraid of. That's exactly what Rook possibly is going to be afraid of here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Millennium Shield, this is a great shot. Obviously, you know the Millennium Eye, the Millennium Widget yeah. from Yu-Gi-Oh! So Duel I guess I Monsters. Will see this at some um, point. Yeah, the Millennium Shield was used by Rebecca Hawkins. It's a, it's like 3,000 defense, zero attack. Mm -hmm. um, I guess this will be a, an ace. 3,000 defense is going to be hard for a character to break down in Rush yeah. Duels. That's a lot of defense points. So Millennium Shield is going to be another monster. And then we have a shot with all three of Rook's aces, love all three it. of Rook's gears. Absolutely the three that I believe he used against Yuga at the yes. end. So a cool shot there. Then we have a shot of Yuga and his Seven's Road. We have a shot of Gakuto, and have we seen that ace? I don't know if that's been played yet. I don't know. It doesn't look familiar I'm to me. I'm sure if we are wrong, we will get corrected. We will, let, we, yeah, we will be told. <laughs> because Rook's ace, this one's been played. Yes. And that, then, that's the, the one she played against Roa, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, then we have a great shot here of Nail, Asana, kind of opening their and eyes. I, and I like this once again that we we had a shot similar of them leading up to Otis uh, when they changed some of the visuals in opening one. Love that we are still sticking with these three, that we're not forgetting their importance. That was a big concern yeah. that I had, especially with new with six new characters coming a lot. in. Are we going to forget about Nail? Are we going to forget about Asana? Are we going to forget about Roa? They had shots earlier with their teams. Now they get shots at the very end. Yeah, singular shots. Makes me think that they are not going to be forgotten about. And oh, yeah. I like how they're both opening their eyes and looking up towards a greater good o almost or greater could be, purpose. Almost uh, the whole situation that is going on, that their eyes are being open to what the incoming threat is going to be. Yes, so. and this is also a great shot. Love that Goha too. City Skyline. You have electricity, blue and yellow. Could represent Rook and Yuga. Could. Maybe the color schemes. And then I don't know what the hell this is. I mean, we're doing some some signers crap going on. Uh, yeah, this is this is if this is real and if this is symbolizing this creature destroying the city. Yeah, I don't know. Shit's about to get real, yeah, real I, quick. I don't know. I'm tempering my expectations. And that's barely but, there, by the way. Yeah, but wow, that is that's the whole shot. I mean, I didn't even notice yeah. what this was, but this looks menacing. It's very cool. This looks menacing. It's very, very cool. Um, I love that. So an amazing shot there, and then I think we have all of the dueling rivalries that we're getting here. Yeah. Yuga on the R, Luke on the U, yep. Roman on the S, Gakuto on the H. And then we get the four aces that we of saw. Course. And now we get yellow haired right. on the R. So we see how they're lining up. He's here. going up against Yuga, I would yeah. guess. This guy on the U, he's going to go up against Rook, second hand in command. The girl character on the S, which yeah. is what I figured. It girl makes versus sense. girl. It makes sense. I think they could potentially have a really interesting rivalry. Uh, and then. Blue-haired guy on now, the age. Now and this it's pretty is, interesting that he's got... This is an interesting shot because yeah. is that implying that that character is a little bit controlled by the other fifth sibling there of like, you're going to do what I say So the thing. voice actor of this character said he is the most mysterious and reserved of all of the yeah. Goha siblings and you never really know what his purpose is. Yeah. That's what the voice actor said about this character. Weird shot there, right? Where it's like, hey, can, can we're going to do what can I... Can we go back a couple yeah. shots here? Because it seems like we're, we're setting up a color uh, scheme theme with the with the other people coming in, right? So you have a little bit of... You could see some of the colors that are coming in. It looks Green. like a, almost a Goha-like symbol there underneath the shirt, yeah. right? Yeah, Goha and symbol. All, and all those colors seem to match with whatever the color is on their shoulder, right? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, if you go one forward here, right? You get the blue to the blue. We see that. Then you get some red here to to her background here, the red hair and everything else. And then you get the orange to the mm, orange yeah, there as well. Yeah, you're right. That's a very so, good call. We'll keep him with the theme. Also, I believe it is the yellow-haired guy that is doing that Probably. to the, to the yeah. kid. Um, and then and you see there. we got all their aces. Yeah. And again, good versus bad. I love talking about it. These aces are coming in from the left, the evil side. Of course. You have the protag aces coming in from the right. So yeah. I love that they keep that alive as well. Um, and... Here's the aces. Um, from right to left, you have the Dra the Levi the Leviathan dragon. Yeah. You have that G monster. You have Utopia with a baseball bat. You have that um, missile dragon thing on the top, and then yeah. you have the Millennium Shield on the left. And uh, what's very fascinating to me is it's a 
5v4. So something someone's left out here. Yeah. And if Yuga switches, it's a 6v3. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. If Yuga switches, it's a 6v3. Asana, Nail, Roa, it's now a 6v6. I think that's what they could be implied. And we also have the gems on some of these certain monsters mm -hmm. here are also corresponding to the gems in the heads of some of those new characters. I think that that should be right because the dragon there we saw it looked like it had a green gem in the yes, top of it, it. Did. then the millennium shield there has a blue gem so i think that could connect to who has who it very well could yeah it very well could and then the final shot here of course is all is four. our hero's yeah. uh emblems uh the gakuto gloves the roa roman phone the yuga dual disc and the rook watch yeah and that is what wraps up opening two um, a lot, man. There's a, there's a lot there. What, what do you think of the opening now that we've just broken it down scene for scene? I think it's awesome. I think we picked up on a couple more things there that we did not see in our initial watch, which is always uh, what you want to do. It's why you want to analyze. Mm -hmm. um, always, we're, we're speculating, right? So we could be 100% wrong. Some of these things could be red herrings. They could never come true. Yeah, we could oh, be, yeah. you know, we, we're, we're good here and you're good here at overanalyzing. Uh, uh, yeah, we so do. It's it. a mixed old channel. Uh, yeah. uh, but I think there are some legitimate connections in terms of color schemes and, and how how we're going to shape up. And I like your little theory there of the possible six on six that's coming. One of my favorite shots is this shot. Is that? Yeah. Happens so like, quick. Like, what is that? I mean, that's literally gone in half a second. Yeah. If no. you don't slow it down, and look, it like looks right at and, you. And that's menacing, It right? looks right and at you the camera. And then you like, the green fire there. I mean, that that shot happened. I'm literally spamming the pause bar. That shot happened so quick. Also fascinating shot. to point out that that monster that was in the poster, the silhouette, yeah. not shown in here. No, not all. shown or hinted at at all. But hey, Studio Bridge does update their visuals a lot. They do. So they it, do. Could, it could pop up when it pops up. Yeah. Really exciting stuff, Love chat. That. Um, anything, any final thoughts here? That's Yuga, man. It's Yuga. That oh, is, yeah. The that silhouette. Is Yuga. Yeah, it's Yuga. <laughs> I, at like the moment, said. I don't, I, you know, and I know some people will maybe be able to try and argue that by saying it's Yuga's twin. Yeah. But I, I just, I don't want to have that debate right now. Not, I, I, we'll I, table I just, that for another time. Yeah, I just think that it's definitely Yuga. I, I completely yeah. agree. And uh, if it is Yuga, He's going to have an interesting choice. Does he go with his family? I know, man. Or does he go with his friends? And is his family trying to destroy Rush Duels? I mean... They're the uh, presidents, the leaders of actually Goha. One slight disappointment that I have with the opening. No Otis. No Otis. No uh, President Drone No either. President Drone. No Otis is kind of bizarre to me. Those two floating around, they're the wild cards. They're the wild cards of how they factor in... Is the President Drone just an agent that was set up here for these siblings? And did Otis want these people here? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's fascinating. Two is still of the more fascinating characters. But guys, that wraps up our uh, breakdown, in-depth analysis on opening two of Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. If you have not watched Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens and you're interested in watching, Entime Subs Tumblr has episodes 12 to 53, uh, or 54 maybe, or 53 by the time this video, uh, 53 might not be subbed, but 52. Yeah. They have all the recent ones. They'll keep updating it, and you're going to have Always. to go to a, a creepier site to watch the first Yeah, definitely go there. They're great. But, but that's okay. Entime Subs Tumblr, the place to be. But guys, let me know all your thoughts on opening two of Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. Let me know your thoughts on the song, the visuals, any theories or a symbolism that we may have missed. Lots Please let about. us know down below. Pete. Thank you for helping me out Thanks and breaking, me, of course, and breaking down this opening. I want to hear all the theories from you guys down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day. Take care, guys. See you guys. Peace.